He's known as the ultimate NFL insider, Jay Glazer. And to many on the outside, that meant a lucrative career, famous friends, and an exciting life. But like we've learned, there's so much more to the story. Jay Glazer knows football. As a top insider for Fox NFL Sunday, Jay's high octane energy and enthusiasm are infectious. And his success has gone beyond the sports world, even landing acting gigs, most notably playing himself in all five seasons of the HBO hit series, Ballers. Jay is the picture of confidence and success. But behind the camera, there's something his viewers can't see. I have this huge personality on TV and out with people because I'm always trying to laugh because I'm trying to hide the pain. Jay was struggling with crippling anxiety and depression most of his life. Sometimes I just wake up and, man, the sky is falling and the world and the universe is crashing down upon me and I'm not worthy of being loved by anybody. Jay says he's tried over 20 medications with little success. I don't make the rules of anxiety and depression. It makes up its own rules. Like, I don't know when it's going to strike. And when it really comes out, I feel like I've been in a 50-round fight. It's exhausting. Now in a new book, Jay is opening up to lift the lid off his struggle through anxiety and depression and sharing the ongoing work he does to manage his mental health. I'm a work in progress. And I'm trying to learn now how to love myself from the inside out. It's, it's hard. Like, I just, I don't know what that looks like. Please welcome a guy that everybody loves these days, Jay Glazer. Jay, thank you so much for being thank here. You. So, oh my goodness, the book, so many quotes, so many things to ask you. Before I dig in, because you are the ultimate NFL insider, I have to ask you, on any piece of paper, did you write and predict that Brady and Rodgers would be out? Oh, no, would I predict that? that. No way. <laughs> No, unless you're the Rams. <laughs> unless you're the Rams. So you didn't see that coming. Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady not at the big dance this year. You know what? Here's the thing, though. The NFL is the greatest reality show in the world. I mean, Kardashian's got nothing on us. <laughs> you, you can't script this stuff. So nothing surprises me. Nothing surprises you. I have to tell you, I was surprised. I know that's an odd segue with how vulnerable you are in the book. I knew and I'd heard that you wear your heart on your sleeve. But then I started to read excerpts, this one in particular, where you talk about living your life between the blue and gray. This is a quote you said, living in the gray feels like an eternal bleeding of the soul, like my insides are a wasteland where no tree or flowers could bloom. If it wasn't so painful, it would be one of the most beautifully written lines that I've read. But the pain behind that is severe. Yeah, it's a lot. And I know a lot of people look at it and go, Man, this guy's life is great. I mean, I'm on with Tyron Hall and DMC. You're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and, you know, they look at it. You got fame, you got fortune, and my life is great. So I want people to understand that. But in between my ears just sucks. So there's a lot of pain there. I always brag about my physical scars. Like, I'm proud of my scars. No one's questioned my manhood, so I'm proud of it. And I wanted to start, I guess, bragging about uh, my mental and emotional scars as well in the gray. So I wanted to show everybody else out there that they're not alone. It's, 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 it's tough, though. And you know what I think that is also special is that you constantly remind us in this book that it's an ongoing process. It's not, you might be unbreakable, but to keep building that foundation, it's not a one-off. And I think that's what's so important, whether it's the search for the right medicines, the right doctors, the right friends and support system. I know Demi Lovato, whom I love, is in your support circle as well, and you are in hers. And her story also shows that these are not one-offs. A lot of people think you have the antidote and you'll move on. It's an ongoing thing. Well, you have to practice it. Same way we practice sports. Same way you might practice something at your job. You've got to practice mental health also. So every single day I wake up, I got to do stuff to get myself out of bed. Some days is harder than other, but it's a, it's a daily battle. It's an everyday battle. And then once I get out of bed, I make the decision to be relentless in my life. Right? That's my decision. And I made the decision a long time ago because I didn't know how to love myself from the inside out. I use my depression, anxiety to motivate me to do all those great things that you just talked about so I could get some love from the outside in. And I'm hoping that one day I can get to a point where that outside love starts to seep in and I can learn that I am worthy and that I'm, I'm worthy of being loved. Um, but I'm not there yet. 
You just teared up, and I and I see it in your eyes. What made you emotional just now? Um, because sometimes I, I kind of look at myself. I'll I'll step away from me a little bit, and I'll look at little Jay and feel bad for him. Want to give him a hug and tell him, "Hey, man, it's all right. You're gonna save a lot of people." So I'm doing this. So. I can save people, I can help people, I can empower people. The one thing I could tell you, I never told my friends about my pain. And here's what I could promise everybody out there. When you open up to your loved ones and your friends about your pain, it draws you closer together. How do you start the conversation? Again, it's every day. So I had two really bad days in the gray a week ago. Mm. I had uh, an anxiety attack on our set of Fox NFL Sunday the other day after the show. It just, I, again, I don't make the rules of this. I just fight it all the time. What I do is now is I call my friends when I'm struggling. Two weeks ago, I, I called a friend of mine who was the first ever UFC heavyweight champ of the world, a guy named Mark Kerr, called the Smashing Machine, 285 pounds. I called him up and said, hey, dude, I'm struggling. Like, it's one of these days I can't get off my couch. He's like, what do you want to do? I said, I want to, I want to come over and spar. I want you to come punch me in the face. He's like, I can do that. Oh. So <laughs> give me more CT. I'm in. Like, it's just, you know, you got to find your team. you got to find your team. Well, I, hold up for a second, because you have a great team. I happen to know somebody on one of your teams. Take a look at this. Hey, Jay. I just wanted to say that I am so proud of you, man. You have been my best friend for 30 years. Um, a lot of this and most of this you kept to yourself for all this time. Uh, but I am so proud of you for sharing everything that you're going through that you can help other people. And the one thing that you know you are, you are a walking blessing, my friend. You've been a, you're a blessing to so many who can read your book and um, get through the gray, as you like to call it. And you're a blessing to me to have your friendship for 30 years. I love you. And uh, congrats on the book. And keep on leading the way. You're a walking blessing. You know what, I'm watching that and I keep, and I didn't know you, you know, I've just met you, but I see little Jay, as you referred to, never imagining that kind of love around him. Who was that guy? <laughs> little Mike. <laughs> little Mike <laughs> talking to little Jay. <laughs> here's the crazy part of this. Okay, by the way, that's our prom photo. Um, <laughs> here's, the, here's the crazy part of this. This guy's been my best friend for 30 years. Wow. 30 years. And uh, it wasn't until two, about, about a month ago, man, the gray just woke me up in the middle of the night. It just woke me up. I call it keeping the monster or the beast in the box. You know, the monster came out, woke me up. Mm. And when, it, when my depression and anxiety affects me like that, it's a physical, visceral reaction. So I feel it behind my rib cage, on the left side of my gut, and then my joints really ache. And we were supposed to do dinner that night. And called him before dinner. I said, hey, man. Oh, I can't go to dinner tonight. Mm. That's the first time I ever said this to him. He said, why not? And I said, man, the monster just got me. And he said, you want me to come over? I said, no. He said, you want to talk about it? I said, no. <laughs> this is where I'm going to cry right now. He said, uh, why have you never told me about it? Oh. I said, I don't know, man. I was ashamed with you, my best friend. And that's why I'm doing the book, to take this shame out. Because... Look at his reaction. If I had opened up to him about this 30 years ago, I would have had my best friend walk on this walk with me. Mm -hmm. Instead, I, I shut him out, which oh my goodness. hurt me more. So that's what I really want people to understand. And that's why I'm so open about it. I could have had him for 30 years. There are support systems all over that you don't know about, right? We got to build a team. And that's why I wrote this book too. Like, I want everybody out there to be part of my team. I need it. Yeah, we all do. Listen, we all need it. And you have formed unbreakable bonds with some amazing friends, famous and non-famous, because they don't just have to be celebrities. You yeah. have a great circle, and I, and I appreciate you so much, and I include myself now as a fan Thank in that circle. Thank you so much for your openness, Jay. I appreciate you so much. The book is phenomenal. Jay's book is unbreakable. It is out now.